And then the second thing he goes in, he goes, don't ever take two seeds of a different kind and throw it in the same field. Don't take like a, an apple seed. I don't know why. Tomato seeds. I don't, I don't even know if tomatoes have seeds. Don't take these two things and put them in the same field together because it'll defile it. It'll, make the, it'll mess the whole thing up. In the same way, don't plow with an ox and a donkey together. He goes through all this weird stuff that makes no sense to us, except that behind it, there is some deep-seated wisdom on why you shouldn't do this. Uh, the seeds, obviously, you, if you put an apple seed and tomato seed, they, go to the, they grow differently. They do different nutrients. We know now through agriculture and, and, and science and stuff that this was, it would actually deplete the ground. It would be very negative and very bad if you were to do this on a regular basis. It would actually weaken and kill both the products, and it just wouldn't be good. And so the ox and the donkey come up, and I'm like, okay, I got to know about an ox and a donkey. And the obvious one is the ox is stronger than the donkey. The donkey's faster than the ox. So there's really nothing wrong with an ox. There's really nothing wrong with a donkey. But I was like, that can't really just be it. Obviously, they would go in a straight line. At least the donkey would maybe help out the big ox, and the ox would just be able to pull together and have a little bit of help out. Just, you know, I was thinking about Shrek because I have two little kids. <laughs> like, if you don't have kids, maybe you didn't go to Shrek. But all week long, and I was talking about donkey. And I was thinking, everybody in this room, they're going to show up, right? After last week's message, it was so, I mean, I was just, it would help. I mean, so spirit was so strong. And we're talking about Jesus and the eternity and the end of time. And that was the end of last week's message. And now this week, we're going to close with a donkey. And I was like, these people, are not, they're not going to follow me. They're, they're going to be lost. I'm talking about a donkey. But I wanted to know, what, what, why, why is it so bad, really, to put an ox and a donkey next to each other? And it's, it's kind of comical to me. A donkey will do one thing. It's the donkey's fault. A donkey will eat just about anything you put in front of it. And a donkey would eat certain plants that were poisonous, and these multiple plants that were poisonous, if they were mixed together, like in his stomach, it would actually create a poisonous gas. This is real life. And it really wouldn't hurt or, or wound anybody. It couldn't, like, kill you. But it would create a smell that would make you want to move to a different planet. And it's so powerful that if you put, this is, this is, this is the science behind this law. If you were to put the ox and the donkey together, the breath of the donkey would be so bad. Stop thinking about the people in your life that. <laughs> the breath would be so bad that as they would, as they, if they were yoked together, that the ox would turn as far as humanly, po well, he's a do as far as oxenly possible, <laughs> and he would drive forward with just his one shoulder, right? And, and, and it would cut his strength in half immediately. But long term, over a period of weeks and months and years, it would actually cause problems all throughout his body, and it would cut the life expectancy of the ox in half. So think about that. That needs to give everyone here encouragement to brush your teeth on a regular basis. <laughs> You're literally killing people. So this is the thing I want to make, and I, and I, I want to speed up. I, I want you to understand that we're not talking about believers and unbelievers. We're not talking about good people, bad people. We're not, we're not talking about that. We're, this is, they're, they're, at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with an ox, and there's nothing wrong with a donkey. But there's everything wrong with an ox and a donkey. And, and the thing that I felt like the Lord has just laid on my heart to share with you as we kind of go lay the foundation for the next few weeks is that there are things that God is doing in your life, maybe in this season of your life, directions that God's taking you, uh, a way that God's designed you, and there's a purpose in your life, and there, there's a thing that he's doing, and he's moving, and he's pulling you one way. And there may be somebody else. You may be the ox. They may be the donkey. And, and, and God's moving in their life just as much as you and, and teaching them just as much as you and doing just as many great things in their life as you, but they're going in polar opposite directions, and they're thinking totally different on certain things and certain things in life. And, and there's nothing wrong with this direction, and there's nothing wrong with that direction. But if you try to get connected on a deep level, neither one of you will go anywhere. You won't go anywhere. And I, 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 I want to just give you some practical things that you could maybe take away with really fast. So I, I believe at the end of the day, I believe wholeheartedly, especially after studying through all this and getting uh, to this place in scripture and seeing God's view on all of this, I, I can confidently say that I believe that in, in five years, who you will be in five years the way you will think in five years, what you will accomplish in five years, who you'll be in five years will be significantly impacted by who you surround your life with right now today. And, and it, there's a little equation that the Lord put in my heart. I, I like math, I'm sorry. It's, called, it's X5 equals XC. X times five equals XC, meaning that something in your life in five years if it was equal to something in their life right now, would you be okay with that? 
So if, if your life five years from now went the direction they want their life to go right now, would you be okay with that? Well, if your marriage five years from now looked like their marriage right now, would you be okay with that? Guys, if, 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 if you were five years from now to be the husband that your bro is right now, if you were to have the same values and the same perspectives and the same ideas and you were to treat your wife five years from now the way he treats his or thinks about his right now, would you be okay with that? Ladies, uh, your girls, you know, you go, I don't know what you guys do for fun, pedicures or something, I don't know. But your girls that you chill with and you hang out with five years from now, if, if you were to view your husband or respect or disrespect your husband or, or treat your husband the way that they view and talk about theirs and treat theirs right now, would you be okay with that? Would you be okay with, with being the father or the mother right now, the people that are closest to you five years from now, would you be okay with raising your kids and, and treating and thinking about life on that manner from parenthood the same way they think about it now and desire now and do it now? Would you be okay with that? Because the reality of it is, is that if you're not, you got some issues coming because they're gonna affect those things in your life. Your financial life, listen, this is, this is straight economics. This is straight economics. You do the research. The greatest factor of your financial life is not your income or even your spending habits. The greatest factor of your financial life is the people you do life with around you. Because in the words of Kevin Hart, you try to keep up with them. And all the sinners know exactly what I'm talking about. You try to act, you try to keep up with them, you're gonna go their direction. If they're gonna spend money here, you're gonna spend money there. Gr economic fact, the greatest factor of your financial life will be the people that are closest to you. The way you think about money. And in five years, if you thought about money the way they think about it now or you, you, you handled or managed your finances the way they do it now, would you be okay with that? At the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with an ox and a donkey, but many times there's absolutely something wrong with them together. I'll give you an example in my life, just real quick. I value my time in a way that most people simply don't. And some of the people close to me may even say to a fault. I value my time. I've got a weird sense of time because I know but on the shadow of a doubt, the greatest resource in this life is time. Because every second, two, three, Four, you'll never get that back. You can spend 50 grand and make 50 grand. You waste 10 seconds, you never get it back. That's how I feel. Seasons come and they go quick. Kids are only kids for a moment and then it passes. My 20s are gone, I'll never get them back. To me, I value time like nobody's business. And, and there may be other people out there that don't really value time like that. And But, but because of me, the way that I value time and, and I, I, I'm going to spend time with my kids and I, I, want, I want to enjoy life. I, I, I want to enjoy my wife now while we're young, not when we're 60 and can't, if you know what I mean. So where some of you guys, listen, this is, different, this is just bonus. Where some of you guys are like, we're not going to spend any money. We're not going to go on any vacations. Right? You're investing in your wife, right? You're setting up experiences. Well, she doesn't really need that. Yes, she does. And you do too, bro. But there's some people, there's some people that they view, there's nothing wrong with it. They won't spend a dime. They, they, they wouldn't dare go on some extravagant vacation, wouldn't spend a dime because they're thinking about long-term future. I want to be able to retire. I want to be able to retire early. I want to be able to quit working. I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to do that. Now, I'm sounding like I'm being negative. I'm not. That's fine. There, there's nothing wrong with that. There's some wisdom in there. But for me, but for me, if it financially makes sense and I can do it and it fits within financial wisdom, I want to enjoy the life I have right now in this minute because I know God's given me these beautiful kids and they're going to be gone in a second. God's given me my young, my beautiful wife and I want, to enjoy, I want us to enjoy right now because it's going to be gone in a second. It's going to be over. So the way I think about time is totally different. And if, I, if I'm in deep friendships and deep partnerships with people that think totally opposite and they're like, no, it's about 50 years from now. It's about that up there. Listen, we're not going to be able to coexist and there's going to be a pull and there's going to be give and there's going to be friction there's going to be and they're going to affect. And, and if I start to bend their way and I start to go their way, I will look back and one of the greatest uh, regrets in my life will be missing this thing with my kids, missing this moment, missing the season, missing this time. But if I surround myself with people who think totally different, there's nothing wrong with it. 
And I'll give you the greatest example I can give. One of my heroes in life is Billy Graham. Billy Graham might be one of the most righteous people and holy people and the prophet of the last hundred years. But because of the work that God was doing in Billy Graham's life and in the season of life that he was in so young, he was not able to be around his kids for weeks and months at a time when they were younger. But they loved him and he loved them and there was nothing wrong with it because that was the direction that God was going. There's nothing wrong with an ox, nothing wrong with a donkey. But if you put them together... There's issues and there's problems. So you have to be aware of what God's doing in your life, the direction that God's taking you and who you really want to be in life. And if you look over at the people that you're connecting with on a deep level and that you're letting speak into your life and you're letting influence your marriage and you're letting influence your kids, I can promise you right now, none of you are strong enough to fight the battle that they, they will mold you, they will change you, they will bend you. You are not strong enough. God has made you. That's why he's brought this warning in. That's why he's trying to drive this thing to you. There's nothing wrong with a different thought process. There's nothing wrong with a different way. But if God says you're an ox and he's pulling you one way, you've got to make sure you don't let any donkeys come along with you. And you've got to make sure that you don't get in the way of somebody else's life. Because there are things that God's doing in your life. There's things that God wants to use you for. And that means that there's going to be certain people that God has designed to be connected with you. And if you keep chilling with your boy because you always have, you might just be throwing your marriage away. You might just be throwing your financial future away. And it would be foolish not to spy out, not to explore, not to be cautious with the friends and the people and the inner circle and the people that are closest to you because these people besides the hand and the spirit of God himself, I believe the second greatest impact you will have in your life will the people, the people you surround yourself with. So spy them out because who you surround yourself with today will mold you tomorrow.